All right, everybody, all right, Zane with Really Easy AI, and today we're going to be talking about working with data in 10 minutes or less. Let's get to it. So uh, not to bury the lead, let's jump right into it. Let's assume you have a spreadsheet or some common delimited data or something with some data in it like I'm about to do here and you wanna analyze it. Well, you could literally just take any data. In this case, I have some bike share data where you know, if you've ever been to the city, they have those bikes you can rent and you can ride them somewhere else and put them in these little uh, parking places and all that. That's what this is, bike share data. I think it's from Seattle. And I'm just going to give it the um, common delimited file in this case, or it could be a spreadsheet or anything else. It really doesn't matter what it is. And I'm going to say, uh, do a full data analysis on this file. <clears throat> and so that's super vague. I'm not really being specific about what I want. I'm just saying, do a full data analysis on this file. And right away, it jumps in going, okay, great. Here's the columns you have. It, it enumerates the columns and the values in those columns. And then it gives me some statistics. The data set includes 731 days of data. Uh, let's see here. The average number of bike rentals per day is approximately 848 with a standard deviation of 687 and on and on and on it goes. And then it just keeps doing analysis. <clears throat> It'll even do visualizations for us, which is just amazing. And so we'll give it a second. See if it can uh, get some visualizations out for us. It usually does. And there they go. Boom. Visualizations. Very cool. Isn't that nice? Look how beautiful that is. So distribution of bike rentals uh, uh, here. What does that look like? Bike rentals by season. we got a box plot. I mean, it's a thing of beauty here. All right. So that's, that's the first item. Now we're going to see more of, of things like that as we go along. But now that you've seen what it can do, let's talk about what you can do it with. And here are the file types that you can work with in this environment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So pretty much any text document of any kind, whether it be text here, uh, code, which is also just text documents, that's fine. Uh, it can also work with image data, document data, PDFs, uh, Word docs, Excel files, PowerPoint files, you name it. Uh, data, uh, comma delimited files, Excel spreadsheets, and so forth, even audio and video files in a limited capacity. So there's quite a bit you can do. Uh, what I would suggest is you just throw your file into the, the model and ask it some questions and see if it can answer them. Uh, this is a great time to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe. If you would, please, I would very much appreciate it. All right, so now, <clears throat> what are the limitations? Well, you can have up to 10 documents, and each document can be 500 megabytes in size, up to 500 megabytes in size. So if you're doing your math, you can have up to five gigabytes of data that this thing is chewing on. It's incredible, it's a lot of data. And the documents are retained for three hours after you end your conversation. So if you do a whole bunch of conversation, and you pause or you end for three or more hours, the documents will go away and you'll have, you may have to re-upload them. Uh, at least that's how it used to be. They may have changed it. All right, so let's talk about data visualization. So you saw some pretty visualizations. So just to reiterate that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a new set of data. This is my favorite penguin data. It's data on penguins that a lot of data scientists use. And uh, what I'm gonna say here is I'm gonna say, uh, do a full uh, clean and analysis of this data. Let me just grab my prompt here um, and give me all possible visualizations. So in this case, I'm gonna literally ask for visualizations after it uh, creates and cleans the data. So it's gonna go in, figure out what the data looks like, see if any data is missing, figure out what to do with that missing data. Um, that's what I mean by clean it. So yeah, you can have it go in, you can have it look at your data, you can have it clean your data, and then you can have it take the clean version of the data and do stuff. Now be careful with your cleaning of the data because it may make decisions you don't wanna make like deleting rows that have missing data. But there we go, boom. We're, right away we start getting beautiful visualizations. Look at these visualizations. Distribution of penguin species, there we go, very nice. Male, female, and unknown. Okay, well, I imagine that's a problem. That tells us the data might have a little problem there. Here's some um, <clears throat> uh, groupings here. You can see uh, Coleman depth and Coleman length, flipper depth versus uh, body mass. 
So a uh, flipper length rather. So flipper length and body mass, as you might expect, uh, the longer your flipper length, the greater your body mass. Bigger birds have bigger flippers. Uh, <clears throat> body mass by species and so forth. So very, very cool. Um, here, uh, there's, it indicates some errors, and now it created a correlation heat map between different things. If you're not familiar with what those are, you can look them up, but very powerful stuff. And it's still going, by the way. It's creating all possible visualizations just like I asked it to. So I'm going to stop it there. Uh, pretty powerful stuff. Now, let's move on. A lot of people don't realize that this thing will actually unzip zip files and do analysis too. So let's do one of those real quick. I'm going to start a new chat. I am now going to give it a zip file which has some marketing campaign data. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, unzip this uh, file. And let's see, make sure I got everything here. Hang on, let me grab my prompt. There we go. It's fighting me a little bit. Unzip this and give me a one paragraph of what this data is about and three visualizations that represent the data. Make sure the visualizations are presented individually. Sometimes it'll put the uh, visualizations together. So I like to say make sure to pre uh, present them individually. It hasn't done that on this run, but it will sometimes. If it jams them together, just ask it to give you the uh, visualizations individually and it'll do that. And that way you won't wind up with little tiny visualizations. So here you can see the data set appears to be a marketing campaign data set containing various demographic purchase and campaign response uh, information for 2,240 individuals. Great. And now it goes on and starts creating visualizations for us. And there it is. There's the first visualization. So this one is uh, frequency and income. The distribution of customers income with most customers earning between 20,000 and 80,000. Good to know. Uh, here. This second visualization shows the total spending by product category. So uh, obviously wine, uh, meat and wines, I guess. Uh, is that what's going on here? Uh, the most on wine. No, it's, it's just followed by meat products. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. So no, it, this is wines and this is meat. And so we've got a lot of alcoholics apparently. And then, uh, yeah, third visualization shows the response rate to different marketing campaigns. and Different campaigns. Campaign one, two, three, four, five. And we can see that three, four, and five are really doing good with four leading the way. All right. <clears throat> so this is the kind of stuff we're talking about that you can take advantage of. Take any data. Now it gets better. We can actually manipulate images as well. So whether you create the image in Dali or you have an image, in my case, I actually have an image, um, whatever. If, you, if it has an image to work with, and so here I've got this image, nice color image here. And then I say something like, um, uh, draw a square around the person in this picture. Uh, it has spatial awareness and will actually draw a square around the person in the picture. Now, it's not always perfect. I'm going to warn you up front, but lately it's gotten a whole lot better. So let's take a look, see if it succeeded. Okay. Whoop. Mm, pretty close, not quite there, so I might try regenerating it. Uh, let's, let's try it again. Sometimes it does really well and sometimes it doesn't do so well. I'll only give it two shots and then we'll, we'll go from there. You may, may take a shot or two to do it and I just regen that time. So let's try that one again. Uh, nope, nope, it's a fail. Okay, well, you saw the square. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but here's something that does work. If I tell it now to make the picture black and white, it will do that as well. So let's say you really get a really good picture and you don't want to risk regenerating it. Um, this thing will do stuff like, you know, pretty simple stuff, but it'll, it'll do things like make it black and white. So there we go. Whoa, it is, well, okay, wrong thing. Hang on, that's my slide deck. Where did it go? There it is. Come on. There we go. It's giving me a hard time. There it is. It's black and white. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, last but not least, we've got, uh, whoops, oh, that was it. I meant to have one more thing. Did I miss it? I think I did. Well, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more thing just for fun, and that is documents. I actually have a story here by Ray Bradbury, the Velt, assuming I can get it dragged over. And I could ask you questions like, uh, how many words are in this document? 
and uh, I'll just do it all in one shot. I'll just say how many words are in this document and how many times does the word lions appear, lion or lions appear. Uh, give me the page number and sentence each word is in. So there's 4,267 words. The words lion or lions appear and then it gives me the page number and the sentence as it goes. And that's it. A little over 10 minutes. Apologies, but uh, there you have it. Pretty cool stuff you can do with uh, the ChatGPT 4.0. This is Zane. Have a good one. And I'll see you next time.